As an addiction psychologist, I can tell you that one of the fundamental things that we learn over decades of my doing it is that for a lot of people, addiction is a disease of emptiness as well, right? So it's not, so loneliness is a big one for depression, but for a lot of addicts, there's a, a sense of existential emptiness. And, and people fill that emptiness with sex, drugs, and rock and roll, or fill in the blank of whatever compulsive behavior, you know, floats your boat. So this Polish priest, and, and I read the story when I was traveling overseas, you know, it has to be 10 or 12 years ago. Um, he ran a homeless shelter. He was a young, progressive, hippie priest who used to be a musician. And he had about 30 or 40 men that lived in the shelter. And these were low bottom, al- quote unquote, low bottom alcoholics from various stages of life. Some of them were, had been professional, some of them not, but they all wound up as a result of their alcoholism, homeless and in the shelter. And the priest asked them all one by one, what's your dream, your passion? And they all looked at him like he was crazy. And you realize that they were suffering from a, an absence of meaning and purpose in their lives. And perhaps maybe that's why they were self-destructively drinking. And so the priest goes into the hospital for procedure. He's in the bed next to a a, a guy that builds, uh, was a boat builder and got this white light inspiration and goes back to the shelter and says, men, we're going to build a boat and we're going to sail it around the world. And as you can imagine how that first went over to 40 homeless men living in the shelter, like, what are you crazy? Um, But he was charismatic enough to be able to sort of have them buy into this dream that he was trying to have as a shared dream, as a shared purpose. And, and he did, you know, and they started building this Noah's Ark looking contraption that came up. And when I read the story, it was three years into the project and the reporter at the International Herald was interviewing the men and not one of them had relapsed in three years. And at that time I was teaching addiction treatment at a medical school and, you know, our success rates here, our rehab success rates are single digits, eight to 10% optimistically. And with all our fancy <laughs> psychological insights and wisdom, and meanwhile, this priest, this ex-musician priest had a 100% success rate of, of essentially treating alcoholism because he found that it wasn't about the drink, it was about the emptiness, and it was about filling people's lives in a meaningful way. And I think that's true with the new addiction as well. If we're living meaningful and engaged lives, we're less vulnerable to be sucked down the digital rabbit hole of compulsive behavior if we feel truly connected and engaged in deeper meaning. And and there's not those opportunities as much anymore as there used to be. You know, there used to be more opportunities for true, you know, opportunities for giving back, for for philanthropy, for for connecting with human beings in a way that really means something. Um, in the digital age, all that's been neutered in, in to a large degree. So we have to lean into finding those opportunities to give our lives meaning. Well, it's if our attention is finite, then if we're putting it somewhere, it's being taken away from somewhere else. So if it's going into the virtual world, it's coming out of the world world. There you're missing out on those interactions that allow you to feel good. You're disassociating, disassociating yourself. You're disconnecting from people in the world world so that you can feel better for having safe connections and face safe interactions uh, virtually, which we all know may be safe because they're make-believe. 